Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back, students. In the last lesson, we talked about matter, and one of the last things we said about matter is that it has uh, space and it has a certain mass associated with it. Um, what I also talked about in the last lesson was that matter uh, had certain properties associated with it. So what I wanted to do is kind of finish up that discussion before we jump into talking about atoms and elements in a little bit greater detail. So let's go ahead and focus first on phases of matter. There are three phases of matter that uh, matter can uh, be in, in its uh, surroundings or out in the normal world. So if you look around, you're going to find that some of the things that you see are going to be hard, solid things. Other things, for example, if there's a, uh, let's pretend that you have a glass of water or some kind of beverage on, on the counter, that would be matter. And that matter is in a liquid state. And then the other form is that whenever you cook something or even the air that you breathe right now, that is another form of matter. And that's matter that, one, you can't see very well, but the atoms of, of certain gases are there. And those gases uh, have atoms, and those atoms uh, have a, a particular mass and take a certain amount of space. Therefore, it's matter as well. So in those three examples, what we see is that matter can take one of three states. And those states are the following, solid, liquid, and a gas. So when we talk about a solid, what we're talking So here you have a, uh, atoms of, of a substance called water, H2O. So in the blue, you've got the uh, hydrogens and the oxygens. And in the red, you've got the hydrogens. And so if you notice here carefully the arrangement of these atoms then, you can see they kind of follow a very organized pattern with one another. And if I were to keep drawing them, you would have seen that the pattern is there. Not only is it aligned in one direction, but it's also aligned in the other direction. And so you start to see that you start to form a plane here. And this is just one layer, but these, these uh, particular atoms are going to align themselves layer upon layer upon layer. So you really start to form a very uh, organized structure to the solid. And so let's go ahead and write some of those characteristics here underneath solid. So again, some of the characteristics of solids is that they have a definite shape, they have definite volume, the particles are packed together, the particles are also organized, and the particles are held together by very strong bonds. The, moving on to liquids, we know that liquids have a definite volume, but the one thing about liquids is that they don't uh, have a, a uh, definite shape. Uh, in other words, they have an indefinite shape. Whatever container you put them into, it'll take the shape of that container. And so well, that's something that's very important to keep in mind because when you're talking about the forces that keep the liquids together, the forces are less strong than those compared to the solid, which allows the atoms to essentially move past one another a little bit freely. So we tend to say that the atoms of a liquid have atoms that are free-flowing. And so let me write this information down for you. So you see here that liquids have definite volume. They have no definite shape. The particles are close, as you can see from the illustration down at the bottom. But the thing about these atoms or these particles is that these atoms or particles are going to be able to move past one another in any direction that they like. It doesn't really matter which one it is. They'll move in the direction um, that they feel like moving. And so essentially, you can get uh, uh, the matter tends to uh, follow the, the shape that is often observe when you have a liquid inside a container. For example, let's say you have a water bottle. If you kind of rotate that bottle around, you're going to see that the shape of the water inside is going to take whatever shape is available at that time, given the free space that it has inside the container. And so if you move the bottle upright, then it'll take the, sh the shape of the bottle that's upright. But if you flip it upside down with the cap on so it doesn't spill out, but if you twist it upside down, then you'll see that the shape of the matter then now takes the the shape of the container in the up, uh, upside down position. And so that's very important to note about uh, liquids. The last uh, state of matter is going to be gases. So some of the uh, characteristics of gases is that they have no definite shape or definite volume. What this really means is it's very similar to what happens with a gas, uh, excuse me, with a liquid, where you, if you put it into a container, the gas particles are going to be able to expand, move past one another, and essentially, because of the uh, particles themselves, they will take the shape of whatever container you put them into. However, because the particles are so spread out that you probably won't even see it, 
uh, to know the difference. The other thing is that these particles are moving past each other very, very rapidly. And uh, so what that really entails is that the particles are essentially one spread out. They're moving past each other very quickly. So the forces that are really keeping these particles together is going to be very, very small compared to the forces that are keeping liquids together versus those forces that are keeping solids together. So if I had to tell you which, is the, which one of these phases of matter has the strongest bonds of the particles, I would say that solids are going to be the strongest, liquids are going to be the second strongest, and then gases are going to have the weakest bonds between its particles than any of the other two or of all of the three phases of matter. And so if I had to draw the uh, particles, essentially what you would see is that you would probably have one particle here and maybe one on up here, you know, because they're so spread out that you're probably not going to see them very much, and they're moving at extremely fast rates, these particles are. And so you're not going to be able to see them very much. And so th that's really what we're talking about when we talk about the, the solid, the liquid, and the gas. And so in the next lesson, what I want to do is talk a little bit more about the properties of matter both the physical properties and chemical properties, before we get into the discussion of uh, elements and, electron and atoms. Because I know that I said that we were going to jump right into the atoms after the uh, previous lesson, but I think it's important that we talk about the phases of matter, which we just did, but that we also talk a little bit about the chemical properties before we get into that discussion. All right, so we'll see you next time.